Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to today's session for Microsoft Excel. Uh, today we're going to do absolute cell referencing and the if statements. We'll also just quickly catch up on what we did in the previous session. For those that were here yesterday as well, they'll know what I'm talking about. So I'll just quickly go through what we did yesterday, just so we can get the file up to where it should be. And then we'll start with the new things for the absolute cell reference and if statements. Once again, same as previous sessions, if you want to ask questions, please just use the raise your hand function that's available, and I will get to you guys as you ask questions as well. All right, so starting off with our Excel file, Let me just make it nice and big so you can also see. All right, so this is more or less the same file that we had yesterday, okay? So I'm just going to quickly go through what we did so you can just recap on what we we're doing before we start with the new things that we're doing today, okay? So for the first step, I'm just going to be doing some editing on the documents. So the first part will be merging the cells like we did yesterday as well. As I said, this will be part of your EUP assignments for this semester. So make sure that you do know how to do the merging and that you know where to find all the functions. So merging is basically combining all the cells together. So I'm merging from cell A1 to H1 and do that by simply just clicking on merging center. I'm going to do that the same for the second and the third row as well. I'm going to merge and center them. Then I'm going to apply cell styles, all right? This is what we did just as well for your different cell styles. So instead of making it bold and making the font big, you can use the cell styles. This is also part of what you need to be able to do for your assignments. I'm going through this quite quick because this is all the things we did in the previous session. For guys that wasn't in the session yesterday, the video of yesterday's training is available on our website. As I showed, um, the website address is that tinyurl.com. Florida UNISA. You will simply go to where it says student support materials page and there will be a tab for EUP 151. Under there you'll find all the videos of the sessions that's going to be taking place. All right, so that's for the guys who wasn't yesterday. You want to see what we did in the previous session. So coming back to my file again, I'm applying auto fits. That was to make your cell bigger automatically. I'm now going to change the column width for all of these. The column will set to 13 again, all right, because that's a nice size that works for what we want to do. Then, hopefully, you guys that was in the session remember how to do the autofill. Autofill is very important and it's going to be very useful when coming to your assignments because they will tell you to use the function to fill in formulas and things that you did. All right, so our autofill works just to catch up again. I'll click on the cell that I wanted to use, which is now assignment one. You go to the bottom right corner, we see that little square in the green box there. You'll get your solid black cross, click on it, that's your autofill function, then just drag up until you want it. So that's all that it does. So autofill basically completes the rest of your series for you. So it will start with if you had one or if you had two, whatever it will keep adding to that and putting in the rest of your cells for you. All right. Coming to the average formula at the bottom. All right. Average, remember, whenever you're doing formulas or calculation Excel, you must always put in equals first. Then the formula name that I want is equals average. And then you're going to put in your cell range after you put in your open bracket. Okay. Once you did that, remember to put in your closing bracket, guys. It's important that you type in the closing bracket yourself. Otherwise, the system can mark it as autocorrection. So make sure that you put in your closing brackets at the end. That will then give me my average. I'm going to do the same for the highest mark, which is max. So remember, maximum to get the highest mark or highest amounts, whatever, in a particular cell range. I'm going to do that, close my bracket and enter. Then the lowest mark, the formula for that is minimum equals min. And I'm just going to choose my cell range again. Then I get all that. Now, once again, once I have my formulas in place, I can simply highlight them like you'd normally highlight, and then use my autofill function to put it in for all of my students. Okay. So that's basically what we did yesterday for the training session. Yes, so it's doing the basic formulas, the editing of the cells, merging in autofill. All right. So I'm just going to recap on this part that we did yesterday as well. If you're working with numbers and it comes up like these numbers you have at the bottom, all right, because it's all these decimal marks, all right, everything after the point is decimal values. They will tell you format your cell range to a certain amount of decimal values. So I'm going to change this and I want to take my decimal values. But to do this on your own menu once again, where you get number, all right, there's number there. They get your increase and decrease decimal values. If you want to add more to your decimals, you can increase. If you want to take away, you're going to decrease. So I'm going to use my decrease. 
So it's like in Argir, it's up until two decimals. If you want to take it away completely, you just click until there's no decimal values left. All right. Same for your mark as well. US students will know you'll never get a year mark of 85.75. You'll either get 85 or 86. So for this well, I want to round it off to the closest number. So I'm taking my decimal values away. All right. Now, now we're going to start with the if statement. All right. So the if statement forms part of your logical functions that you get in Excel. All the formulas in Excel are divided into different categories. The if statement, as I stated, is part of the logical functions, and it is put in there because it is a logical thing that you're doing. All right. The if statement is basically a true or false question that you're putting towards the computer. So you're going to tell it, look at a specific value and compare it to something, and then tell me if it's true or not, if it is what you want it to be or if it's not what you want it to be. All right. So the if statement is just a true or false question that you're putting towards the computer. As an end question, before you can expect the answer, you have to put in the proper question so you can get the correct answer. That is how the if statement as well works as well. All the forms we did so far, we just typed in. We typed in equals average, equals min, equals max, whatever. For the if statements, once you're quite good in Excel, you can type it in as well. But I'm going to show you a different way of doing it, and that is by using the insert function button. All right. So the insert function button basically breaks your formula into steps for you, which makes it a bit easier for you to put in the statement that you want so you can see what it's doing. So it breaks the statement down for you or the formula down for you. All right. So to do this, on top where you get your formula bar that I showed you, so right on top, you'll see if I hold my cursor there, it shows formula bar, all right? Next to the formula bar, you get that little sign there, it says FX. You'll see if I hold my cursor over there, so this is here on top, just beneath the ribbon, it says FX, insert function. So there where my mouse is moving, that's your insert function button, all right? So I'm going to click on the insert function button, then you'll get this dialog box that comes up, all right? The screen comes up, it's called a dialog box or just a pop-up menu as most people call it, all right? So in here you can see here's all the formulas that you've used recently. Now if the formula that you want isn't in here, you'll simply use this function on top where it says search for function, you can type the function that you want to use in there. For us, luckily I've got the if statement in there, so I can just click on the if statement. Once I've clicked on the if statement, I'm going to click on OK, all right? And here's your function argument, basically your formula that you want to use broken into steps. So the if statement has those three steps. It's a logical test, value of true, value of false. So this is basically, as I said, your true or false question. So the first part is your question. The second part then is if it's correct, if it's not correct, if it's true or not true. I always tell students when they're doing this, make sure that they can see all the numbers or the forms that they want to work with. So if your screen's in the way of what you're doing, you can simply click on the white ribbon part on top, hold your mouse, and then just drag it to where you want it to go. So you can see all the numbers that you're working with. All right. So for this part, we're now underneath where it says pass or fail on my Excel sheet there. All right. On top of pass or fail, I've typed in 70. So we're saying for this subject, you need to have a mark of 70 to pass the subject. So if you've got 70, you'll pass. If you don't have 70, you don't pass. All right. So that's basically your true or false question that you're putting towards the computer now, right? So if it's more than 70, pass. If it's not 70, fail, okay? So the logical test, the first thing that always goes into your logical test, the very thing that you're putting first will always be, what are you looking at to see the answer? So to see if a student has passed in this instance, I'm going to have to look at his year mark, which is there, right? And they had 86 of that particular student. So that's the first thing that will always go into your if statement is what are you looking at? What do you want to compare? I want to look at the year mark. So you simply just click on the year mark once you're in your test, in your logical argument. You'll see it also when I put in the cell reference there, the cell name that I explained to you yesterday as well, which is cell F6. So it's F6, all right, and that's that 86. It won't show the numbers, it'll always go back to cell references. All right. So now we want to say if this guy this guy needs 70 percent as the mark of 70 to pass the subject. So now I need to use my comparisons. And to do this, you're going to use your greater than or less than symbol to do this. All right. You can find these symbols. I'm just going to go to my keyboard quickly to show you this. All right. So on the keyboard here, I'm going to make it a bit bigger so you can see it nicely. So on your keyboard, Right next to your shift button here on top of your spacebar, basically, there's your greater than or less than symbols, right? 
So you're going to use these, you're going to insert them by using the shift key because they're on the top part of the key, all right? So anything that's on the top of the keyboard, you use your shift button in line with whatever you want. So you use your less than, greater than symbols for this part, all right? So those are your comparison symbols that you can use. I'm just going to go back to my formula, put it in again. All right, so first thing first goes into your logic test. What are you looking at? I'm looking at the student's year mark. Now I would say the student's year mark must be greater than, all right? So it must be greater than, and now you must say what you want to compare it to. But before you do comparisons as well, you must make sure that your statement is correct. So must it be just greater than, or can it also be equals to 70, okay? I'm just going to leave it as greater than now so I can show you how this will affect your formula if you don't do it correctly, all right? So I'm just going to put in F6 must be greater than, all right? And I'm going to say it must be greater than the 70. So I just click on that number once again. It's automatically put in the cell for you. All right. So that's where it will bring all the information that you need. Okay. Now you go to your next step. So you use your mouse, click on value of true. So if this guy is more than 70 that we clicked at now, why do you want the computer to tell you? This is now where your problems comes in. Well, not your problems, what your answers should be. So if this guy is more than 70, I'm just going to type in there, the student passed. So if he has more 70, tell me passed. Go to my next step. If he didn't pass, obviously, if he doesn't have 70, then he failed, right? So now I can put in failed. Simply as that, you just type it in. Once you've typed, you'll see what's made. Once you go to the next step, you will put inverted commas around what you typed. Okay, so you don't have to type those inverted commas. The program will put it in by itself. So you don't need to type in inverted comms like you see where it says pass now in inverted comms. So once I've typed all of that in there, now I simply click on OK because you're done with your formula and you click OK because you wanted to go back and give you an answer. So now I can see automatically there it tells me the student has passed. OK. Now as I say explained yesterday as well, all the formulas in Excel is active formulas. So they keep working the whole time. They keep running in the background. So let's say, for example, this student has passed because he's got a year mark of 86. Let's say for some reason these marks were captured incorrectly. Now you can change them afterwards. You make it different numbers. All right. Now you can see his year mark is below 70. So ultimately your answer will go to failed. So you don't have to redo your formulas once you've typed them in. If you change numbers, the formula will automatically update in what it was doing. All right. So I'm just going to leave it now as passed. Now, this is now where we're going to come to the next problem that you might have in Excel. So now we know we did this formula like we did all the other forms. So I just want to use my autofill function and complete the series because I want to use autofill and put the same formula into all of them because that's what autofill does. All right. So now I'm going to autofill this downwards so you can see what's going to happen. So as soon as I autofill this, you can see that. Obviously, that can't be correct. That guy is 85. So how can it show failed? Okay. So obviously, there's something wrong with the formula. Now I'm just going to go to format view, to the formula view in Excel so you can see what the formulas are showing. All right. So this was my first formula that I put in. All right. Once you click on it, you'll see it highlights the cells that you were working on. All right. So F6, yes, there was the year mark. And I compared it to G4. All right. And it shows me it must be show pass or failed. So now this will be the same for this student. So I'm taking the year mark, which would have been in F7, and now it's being compared to G5, which is pass or fail, not the 70 anymore, all right? So this is now where your absolute cell reference will come into place. Because what autofill does, every time you autofill, autofill will automatically keep adding one to whatever you did. So it will add one to the rows, one to the columns. As you can see, it was six, adds one, comes seven, seven comes eight, nine so forth same it was g4 now g5 g6 so it's keep adding numbers to your formulas but you don't want this to happen because you want all of them to be compared to the 70 which is g4 so all of these g's should stay as g4 all right so that's where that problem came in so what i'm going to do i'm just going to delete all those ones that we know was wrong and i'm going to go back to that first form that i want to fix that first one so i've clicked on where it says pass and just click on that insert function button again to bring your formula back to the screen, all right? 
the usual formula. So it was the year mark, which was F6, that part there, and should be greater than G4, which was the 70, all right? But now I want to tell the computer, I want everybody to be compared to the G4. So G4 must stay the same for all of them, mustn't change when it ought to fall downwards, all right? So G4 must stay the same for all of them. Now to do the absolute tower reference, we're going to be using one of the function keys on your keyboard, all right? So the function keys on your keyboard, I'm just going to show you the function keys as well. Those are those keys on top of your keyboard, where it says F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, all the way to F12. All of those buttons actually do something in each program, all right? For example, the F1 in all programs is always the help function. So if you need help us on any program, just use F1. That will be the help function by default in 90% of all programs. All right, so the F1 is the help function, but we're not going to do that today. I'm just explaining where you get your function keys from. So that's what the F stands for, is for function one, function two, function three. All right, so coming back to my formula again. So, if you want to make any cell absolute in Excel to show that the cell must stay the same for all of the formulas, it mustn't change. You're simply going to go to your formula, you click in between the number and the letter of that column, of that cell. So I've clicked in between G and in between 4. If you can see in closely there, the cursor is actually flashing in between the G and the 4 there to show I'm working with this cell. Now, to make it absolute, it's as simple as using your function buttons. So all you do, you can use function 4. So function 4 on your keyboard is the absolute cell referencing. Okay. You'll see once you click on function 4 on my keyboard, it shows those dollar signs in my formula. So whenever you see a cell in a formula that has these dollar signs in them, you must know this is absolute cell referencing, which means that formula or that cell won't change for as long as you keep copying and pasting whatever you do. That one will stay the same for all of them. All right, so I'm just going to show that again. You choose the cell that you wanted, which was the G4, and you click on Function 4 on your keyboard. Just the F4 button top, click on Function 4, and it makes it absolute. Okay. Now it's been made absolute, and all I have to do now is click on OK. Your answer will stay the same because you didn't change any of your cells. You just made it an absolute reference. Now I can use auto full function again, drag downwards, now I can see it actually works. All right. So now all of them, if I go back to my phone, you can see all of them is using the G4. So it's comparing all of these year marks to the 79. Instead of using that, we just changed to 5, 6, 7, 8, and so forth. All right. So absolute cell reference basically is freezing your cell in a formula so that it doesn't change for the rest of your formulas. Okay. So that's your absolute cell reference part there. Okay. Just going to go back to my screen here so you can see all the work. But now, in the beginning, I told you when you're doing your statement in your if statement, make sure that your statement is correct. Where it must be greater than, less than, equals to, or greater or equals to. All right. So these are the functions that you have to use. Now, if you look at this person here at the bottom, this one is 70. So obviously, it should have passed, but it shows failed. Okay. This means your formula is still incorrect. All right, so I'm going to go back to my formula again, the first formula that I did, so that we can edit that. You always just edit the first formula, and then just use your autofill function to correct all of them. So you don't have to redo all of your formulas every time. You only fix one of them, and then go back and autofill it so that everybody's correct. So, in my statement, in my true or false question that I'm asking the computer, I'm telling it, look at the year mark, which was in F6, right, which was that 86 in this instance, and compare it to G4, which is absolute, which was the 70. But we just said compare it by making it greater than the 70. But it can also be equals to 70. So to put in the equals as well, what you do after your greater than or less than symbol, you're going to put in the equal sign. Your equal sign will always be at the back of your greater than or less than symbol. You can't put in equals and then greater than. The computer will give you all kinds of error messages, okay? So it's always a greater than or less than symbol first, and then your equal sign afterwards. Now I've put in, it must also be equals and not just greater than. I can click on OK. I'm simply going to autofill this again over all of the wrong ones that I want to fix now as well. As soon as I do that, you can see that student that at 17 now also shows as passed. Okay, 
So it's important that you make sure that your statements are completely correct before you autofill them to the rest of your documents. All right. So now we know that is working. So for those of you that want to check your forms, always just make sure that you do check that your formula is correct. The first one is correct. As long as your first formula is correct, the rest will also be correct when you autofill them. Because autofill won't change them if you made the absolute and put in the correct symbols as well. Okay. I'm going to do the same here for distinction, so you can do another example so you can see again how this works. All right. Now let's see. To get a distinction in the subject, we said you need a mark of 80. So on top of distinction, I've typed in 80, all right, because that's my reference that I want to use that I'm comparing my answer to, all right. So at distinction, once again, I'm going to click on my insert function button, all right. I'm going to click on the if statement. If, I can just click on OK. There's my if statement back on the screen. All right, so remember, the very first thing that goes into your logical test will always be what are you looking at to determine your answer. So what I'm looking at to determine my answer is once again the year mark. So to see if a guy is getting a distinction, I need to check on his year mark. So I click on year mark. All right, once I've clicked on year mark, once again, I'm now going to put in my comparison, greater than, less than, equals, whatever the case might be. So once again, I want to say it must be greater than, but I also know it can also be equals to. And now I want to compare it to what? I want to compare it to the 80 this time. So now I simply go and I click on the 80. Once again, I want to make this absolute, so I'd use my function for on my keyboard to print those dollar signs. Now, guys, please don't try and type in the dollar signs when doing absolute style referencing, okay? It is a function that has to be applied. So you have to use the function for button to do your absolute cell referencing, right? To show it's a function being applied. If you put in dollar signs, type in those dollar signs on your own, X will think you're crazy and you won't get the marks that you want for your assignments, okay? So make sure that you use the F4 function. So on the keyboard, I'll show you once again just now, it's the function for button on top of your keyboard, just on top of your number. So it's the, that very first row on top of your keyboard is your function buttons. All right, so now I've compared my year mark to the 80 and I've made it absolute because I want to use it for everybody. Now I can go to my value if true. Now what's nice about the if statements, when it comes to value true or false, you can literally put in anything in there, all right? You'll see a bit later once we get to the next part, you can actually do formulas within your if statement as well, all right? So that's building on your if statement. Instead of just having yes, no, pass, fail, you can actually put in formulas in your if statement itself. But for this part, we're just going to say, do you have 80? Can you get a distinction? If you have 80, yes, you can get a distinction. If you don't have 80, no, you can't get a distinction. All right. So it's as simple as that. I just yes or no for this part. Previous one we did, pass or fail. So you can literally put in anything in your if statement. You can put in colors, black, whites, whatever you want. If you want to show a certain number, a certain name, a month, whatever, you can type whatever you want into your value true or false, all right? If you leave them blank, if you don't type in anything in your value of true, value of false, if you leave them blank, your default answers will just show as true or false, okay? If you don't put anything in there, it will just show true or false. So once I did my full, I know it's everything correct. I want it to be greater, but also equals. I've made it absolute. I can now simply click on OK. Once I've clicked on OK, there's my answer. I can now auto pull this all the way down. And there's all my answers. Nice. So check this guy is 80, and it shows yes, distinction. So you know your formula is correct. OK. So that is the basic if statement where you can just put in your, your statements, what you want it to be, and then just answer yes, no, pass, fail, whatever the case might be. But as I said, the if statement can get more complex. We're going to put in formulas into Excel, right, into your if statement itself. And that part we're going to cover on the next part, right? Is there any questions that anyone wants to ask before I continue with the next part again? Nobody with questions? Remember, if you want to ask a question, just unmute your mic as well so we can hear you, so you can ask your question. Hey, hey. Can you open the door and the door? I can't. All right. Okay. I presume there was not a question. So I'll continue now to my next part. All right. Now I'm going to go to my sales report 
at the bottom. So remember, these are all your different sheets that you have in Excel, all right? So I'm going to go to my sales sheet. What I'll do, I'm also going to upload these files that I was working on onto that website so you can actually download the file if you want to work on it and practice yourself while going through the video to see if you get it right or not. Okay. So I will put the files in the resources as well on that website. Okay. So once again, I'm just going to quickly edit this document a bit so that it looks neat so that we can all see what we're doing. Right, so once again, merge and center. Remember, merge is combining with cells. I'm just combining all of them, making them look better. And for this, I'm using my cell styles again to show these are headings. And then for that part as well, I'm also going to put in a heading there. Okay. I'm going to change my column width for this. Remember to do column width, highlight the columns you want, right click on any column heading, go to column width, and type in the column size that you want. Okay. Just going to make the screen bigger again so that everybody can see. All right. Okay. So once again, I've got January. I want to put in the rest. I must put in February, March, April. Once again, I don't have to type this. I can use the Excel autofill function by just going to the bottom of the first cell, clicking on the box there, and completing the rest of my cells. Okay. Again, we're working with numbers here, but these numbers is normal numbers. I want all of these numbers to be a currency. Remember, in the first session as well, I showed you when you're working with a currency, it's called the counting number formatting. All right, so I want to change this to a counting number formatting style. I will tell this in your assignment as well. In your assignment, I will tell you use a counting number formatting to whichever styles. All right, that is one of the questions that you'll get in your assignments as well. So for this, on top at your home menu, we get number. You'll see they get counting number formatting. You can click on the drop down and choose whichever one they wanted. We're just going to stick to the rand South Africa. So putting the symbol for all of them also makes it two decimals because you're working with the cents again. All right. So to add total per month, I want to add all of that. Remember the formula to use if you want to add is sum. All right. So it's equals sum in the formulas that you want in the cells that you want, which would have been that. Okay. So it's add is sum. But once again, remember I showed yes as well. The easy way you can do this and thing that they'll ask in your signs a lot as well is how to use your quick analysis. So for quick analysis, you must always first highlight all the cells that you want to work with. Once you've highlighted all of them, in the bottom right corner, you get your little icon there. That's your quick analysis. Hold it there again so you can see. It shows you quick analysis. I'm going to use quick analysis again. I'm going to go to totals. They will tell you some as well. You have to do chart tables, spark lines, and you can get it just from these different menus. I just want to work with total, so I'm going to click on totals. So remember the different options here. You have some at the bottom, some on the side. That's just show where do you want your answer to be at the bottom, or where do you want your answer to be on the side. I want my answer to be at the bottom, but I also want my answer to be on the side, so while I still have it highlighted, I can do the same thing again and simply put in my answers there. Nice thing about when using the quick analysis, it makes your answers nice and bold as well for you so you can see these are answers that was typed in. All right. So I'm just going to do my average per month here as well. So once again, equals average, open bracket, the cells that you want from there to there, close your bracket. Okay. Maximum, once again, formula equals sign first. Equals max, open bracket, all the way down to the last cell, highlight. Remember what I said yesterday as well, when you're doing forms, don't include your totals or your averages now, otherwise you're going to get the totally wrong answers. Make sure that you only use the correct cells that you need to use. All right. My minimum, for my lowest mark or lowest amount in this instance. We've got, I've got all of them. Whoops. It's up until there. And highlight all the way through up until there. Right, I'm just going to do my average per rep there as well. So it's equals average. Now I'm working across. Like I explained, just you can work across or downwards. Put in that. Now I've got your basic information. Now you can see what each guy did for those four months, what his average was per month, and what the totals was for each month that the shop did as well. Now we come to bonus. All right. 
So let's say they tell you in this instance, I'm just going to type you at the bottom. Um, to get a bonus, you need more. Uh, let's say you need 100,000 or more. All right. So that's my argument that I want to work with. All right. So to get a bonus, you need 400,000 or more. So we're going to go according to your totals. So that guy's more than 400,000, he'll get a bonus. That person is less than 400,000, won't get a bonus. All right. So this is once again, we want to say whether this guy's getting a bonus or not. All right. So for this, again, we're going to do the if statements. All right. So for the if statement, I'm going to go to my insert function button. All right. I'm going to click on the insert function button. Oh, just click on it there. Get your function screen on which function you want. I want the if statement. I'm going to click on OK. So now, previously when we did the if statements on the EP sheet when we worked with the marks, on top of the year mark pass value at 70 and 80 where we compare it to something. But now I'm telling you, we want to compare it to 400,000, but I don't, don't have 400,000 on the screen in a way to click. This is what I want to compare it to, all right? So for this part, we're going to do the formula a bit different. But the formula always stays the same in the sense that the first thing that will always go into your logical test is what are you looking at to get your answer? So to get the answer to see if the guy is getting a bonus, I have to look at his total that is sold. So I click on his total, all right? Now I want to say the total must be greater. Remember, it can also be equals to. And this previously, we would simply just click on the cell that we want to refer to. But now I don't have that cell that says 400,000. So now you can simply click in what you want it to be, 400 for 400,000. So you can also type in what you want to compare it to. All right. Unless they tell you in assignment, compare this to a certain cell, then you use your cell references. But if they just tell you this certain cell must be comply to whichever amount or whatever words, you can simply type it in. You don't have to use a cell reference in that case. Right. So now we say, if this guy's total, which is now the F6 that I've put in there, is greater or equal to 400,000, will you get a bonus? Yes, you will get a bonus. If you don't have 400,000, no, you don't get a bonus. All right, and I can simply click on OK. And I can also fill this, all right? When you're typing in a number or something that you're comparing it to like I did now, all right? Just want to show you, going to this. You can see, when I typed in the value of 400,000, 400,000 will stay the same because it was a set value that you typed in. So you don't need to make this absolute because it's a number that you typed in. It's not a cell that can change. So in this instance, absolute cell referencing won't be necessary, all right? So this is just normal relative cell referencing because it's relative to what you're doing, okay? So it's not absolute cell referencing in this instance, all right? So now we know whether this guy's getting a bonus or not. But now we want to determine how much bonus is this guy going to get, all right? So we're saying if you have 400,000, let me move it a bit more to this side so we can see that side, so we can see this part. All right, I want to focus on this part, so I'm moving it to this part of the screen. So, if you have 400,000 or more, yes, you're going to get a bonus, but how much bonus will it be? The bonus will be 2% of your total that you sold. So, it will be 2% of whatever you sold there. All right. Okay. So this guy has more than 400,000, so he must get 2% of what he sold as a bonus amount. All right, so 2% of that amount, if I work it out quickly, it should be about 9,800 odd grand, all right? But I'm just going to show you how to do this. All right, so on top of bonus amount, I've typed in this 0 0.02. So why don't I put in 0 0.02 instead of 2%? When you're working with percentage, you're actually working with decimal values. Remember, decimal values is anything that comes after the point or the comma in your actual amount. So anything after the zero, that point, whatever, that is percentage. So if you want to change anything to percentual to show that it is percentage, you're going to click on the amount that you want to change to percentage. And once again, on the menu, on top of number, 
Where we did our counting number for it, next to it you'll see this big percentage sign. You can simply click on percentage style and it will change it to percentage for you. All right. So you'll see 0 0.02 is 2%. All right. So if you're just going to type in 2 and then make a percentage, it's going to go to 200%. I'm just going to show you here, for example. If I type in just 2 and I want to make a percentage afterwards, that will then change to 200%, which won't be what we want. All right. So make sure that you, when you're working with percentages that you're putting it as a decimal value. All right. If I go back to my formula view, all right, this is called formula view, guys, so you can see your formulas. You can see it still shows 0 0.02 in the formula view, in the raw data. All right. But if you go to the normal screen, it shows as 2%. Okay. So that is how you change to percentage. But now I want to put in an if statement there as well to do this calculation for me because I want to sit here and work out each guy's person a bonus individually. All right, so I'm switching. All right, that guy, all right, so I'm to it. That one doesn't? No, I don't have to. All right. So to do this, you're going to use an if statement in all of those as well to show that this is a function that's being applied. So once again, underneath bonus amounts, always make sure you're in the right place before you start with this. I'm going to go to insert function, choose my if statement, click on OK. So there's my argument. Remember logical test, that is your true or false question that you're putting towards a computer. Now you want to say if, all right, so let's say if the bonus, all right, where it says yes or no, because you're going to go according to yes or no. So if it shows yes, it must do a calculation. If it's not yes, it will just be nothing because it doesn't have to get a bonus there. So if that equals two, and I'm going to type it in as well because I don't have a reference for this. Yes. Now, when you're working with words, you have to put it in in inverted commas. Remember in the previous one when I did the bonus, I just typed 400,000 without inverted commas. All right. So when you're working with numbers, you can just type the straight number. But if you're working with names, words, you put it in, in inverted commas to show. So if H6 is yes, then what? If it is, yes. Yeah. So if this guy has to get a bonus, what is it we need to do? We need to calculate 2% of that amount. All right. So this now we're going to start doing calculations within your if statements. All right. So I want to work out 2% of that amount. So for those of you that know how to do this, this is part of the mathematics or counting that you'll do as well. If you want to, want to work out a percentage of any amount, you simply take that amount and you multiply it with the percentage, all right? So in this instance, I want to take that amount. So I want to take the guy's total, all right? Because he gets bonus according to what his total was. Total, I'm going to multiply. I want to multiply it with what? I want to multiply it with the 2%, all right? But now we know that 2% will apply to everybody. So if we need to get a bonus, everybody will use the 2%. So once again, we have to make this absolute cell referencing by using the function for button on your keyboard. So absolute cell referencing, see there I get my dollar signs again, show this is absolute, all right? Now I go to my value if false. So if this guy, if it's not yes, obviously it's going to be no. So if it doesn't, make, doesn't need to get a bonus, it will simply be zero. I can just put in zero because he's not going to get anything. Okay. So going through the formula again, we find take it off the screen. First, always, what are you comparing or what are you looking at? I'm looking at the total, all right? Or in this instance, I'm looking at the bonus, which is the yes or no, all right? So I'm looking at that and I'm comparing it must be yes. So here you can see as well, you can also just use the equal sign. You don't always have to use greater or less than. You can also just use the equal sign on its own, all right? So once I've done all of that, I've put in my formula, Worked all of that out, you just click on OK and you'll get your answer. So there you can see it worked out 2% of that amount because he's getting a bonus yes. I did everything correct. I made absolute cell reference. I can just auto fold this as well. And there you can see it will work out all the formulas for you. So as soon as the guy has a no for no bonus, it will just put in a little dot like that. When you're working with accounting number formatting, if amount comes to zero, it will always show that. You won't put in R 0.00, right? So don't worry when you see this in your assignments. That is the correct thing that should display if you're working with a currency, okay? So it won't show 
rain zero zero zero. Okay, it will just be a little dash there to show it's nothing. Okay, and you must put in that zero as well, because if you didn't put in the zero in your formula there, okay, I'm just going to show you. If you didn't put in your formula in there, if you didn't put in that zero there, if you left it blank, it would have put in false as your answers. So I'm just going to erase this, show you what's going to happen. If I put in that in there, it will put in the default, which is false, which is fine, it looks fine. But now if you want to add all of this, if you want to add how much is my total bonuses, you won't be able to add it because you can't add numbers with words. All right. So that's why it's important that you always put in a zero if you're working with numbers. Okay. Don't just leave it blank. Always put in a zero so it can show the correct value. Okay. Because otherwise you won't be able to add up any of your formulas. Okay. Everybody fine with what I've explained? I hope so. I didn't see any hands coming up yet or any questions coming through. Okay. Is there anybody who'd like to ask a question before we continue as well? Nothing, nobody. Okay. All right. That's good. All right. Okay, guys. So as I explained, when you're doing absolute cell referencing, you use your keyboard and use those function buttons. Absolute cell referencing is that F4 sign that you see there. Okay. You must use function four when you're doing absolute cell referencing. It's very important that you know how to get your absolute cell referencing. It is part of the assignments for the EUP module itself. Okay. So function four is absolute cell referencing. Tomorrow when we have time as well, I will show you some of the other functions that can actually use in Excel as well. Okay. For those of you that was interested in how I got the formulas to show on my screen. So this is the normal view, all right? If you want to go to formula view, this is formula view. We can actually see all of your formulas to see what was done, all right? You can do this by using your keyboard as well. This is called formula view. So to get to formula view, you're going to use your keyboard. You're going to do the following step. You can click on the control button here at the bottom left of your keyboard. Press, hold it in. Then use that key there next to the number one. It has that little squiggly sign on there, all right? There's comparison sign. So use control and that button. So you hold in control, then press that button, and it will show the formula view. If you want to go back to the normal view, you do the same steps. Can you click on control? And that button then will go back to normal view. So I'm in formula view now. If I click on control and that button, it shows your normal screen again. Okay. So perhaps if, why you'll use formula view, if you want to do a print out of your work to show that you did do the formulas, you'll do that. So you can put it in formula view, print, and it will print the formulas and not just the answers like you have in normal. Okay. So, yes, there's a question. Good uh, morning. When I in, 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 in set a uh, function, uh, did, did you use uh, the function for a uh, for function uh, where it says uh, the value the value if true? For which part that? Just say again. Uh, on the bonus amount. Uh, yes. On the in, in, uh, instant function uh, where it yes. says uh, value if true, uh, did you did you also use the Yes, the I used my absolute salary. You're talking about this part here. So I'm yes, doing that amount and I'm using that absolute salary, which was the function for button. Yes, that's correct. Because you want to use the 2%, which was that I4 for everybody. Yes, so, yes. It did, so it was an absolute salary reference as well. Because it won't, even if you make it absolute, the 2%, it won't work at the 2% as you see for those ones, because they logical test doesn't comply to yes because okay. those ones show no so it won't do the calculation then uh, okay okay uh, thanks thanks and uh, and, and sorry yes. last, last question and the 0, 0.02 um how did you change it to two percent two percent all right yes so I'm just going to type anywhere on the screen again so you can see, all right? So I'm just yes. going to type this. So let's say we want to work with 15%, which is VAT, all right? So yes. for 15%, you're going to put in 0 0.15, all right? Because that is now the normal number. So to yes. change it to percent, you simply click on the number itself, which is now that one. And there where we got the currencies, where that your currency, next currency, you'll see there's a big symbol sign there, a uh, percentage sign. Yes, see there on the top? Yes, you just click on that and it changes it to percentage view automatically. 
Ah, okay. So you don't have to type in the percentage sign, it does it for you when you change it to percentage style. Ah, okay, thanks. Man. thanks. Okay. No problem. Okay, anybody else with a question? All right. So for the absolute cell referencing, today was all about the absolute cell referencing and the if statements. All right, so here we use the if statements to put in whether the guy's passed or failed by comparing it to a certain number by using the absolute cell referencing, all right? And this one we went a bit farther and we actually used the if statement by putting in a calculation in your if statement itself, all right? So you could have had different options here as well. For example, let's say if the guy didn't have 400,000, he didn't get 2% bonus, he would only get 1%. Then you can actually put in a formula in there as well to show that he only gets 1% if he doesn't get 2%, all right? So you can have more than one formula in your if statement itself as well, all right? But we will build on this as we go along as well throughout the sessions, okay? The sessions that we're doing What's today? Friday. So on Monday, we're doing the lookup formulas and the V lookups. All right. So we're going to do two different lookup formulas in there. And for this one, well, we're going to have to use the absolute cell referencing. So we're going to use again. So you'll be able to see how we did the absolute cell referencing again. All right. What I suggest, I'm going to upload this video as well in a, in a while to that website. All right. Which is on that website. So you can go through it again and see if there's anything that you didn't understand. All right. If you're not sure, you can ask me in the next session. We can simply email me directly as well. All right. So if you want to email me directly, I'll just put my email here as well, so you can just email me directly, and I will try and answer as much as I can via the emails as well. All right. So that's my direct email. So you can email me there as well if you need any assistance as well. All right. So if you need anything, just email me and I will get back to you as I can. If I need to call you and we do a little private session as well, I can search if you can show me the file that you're working on. I will try and assist as we can so that you can actually do practical work if you're not sure. All right. So please feel free to contact me if you need any help regarding the Excel or Word or PowerPoint that we're still going to do next week as well. Okay. So. If there's any other questions, I'll give you quickly a minute or two to ask questions. Otherwise, we'll be done for today. Um, as I said, I will upload the video and I will also put the links to the files itself so you can actually download the files and work on them as you go through the video, which might actually help you as well to see what you're doing so you can get a hands-on practical feel of what we're doing. Okay. So any other questions from anybody? No other questions? All right. Okay, thank you, everybody. The session today went a bit.